Now, at least 12 people have died along Lambata Gay Bida Road when trucks loaded with soy beans, benny seeds, and other goods lost control two kilometers before a gay town. Now, the Niger State Sector Commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Kumar Sukwam, um, confirmed the incident, saying that the incident occurred on Saturday around 5 a.m., two kilometers before the IBB University School of Remedial Studies, again. He said 12 people died on the spot, while 10 others sustained severe injuries and were taken to Agay General Hospital for medical attention. Now, Sukwam said accidents involving two trucks loaded with soybeans and benny seeds and 75 persons were headed or heading to Lagos from the north. He attributed the cause of the crash to wrongful overtaking, speed limit violation and loss of control. The sector commander advised motorists to maintain maximum speed limits and avoid wrongful overtaking, especially in the festive period, to avoid loss of lives and property. Meanwhile, three passengers have been killed and 12 others injured in an auto crash at a Shasha market along the Akure or War Highway on Sunday. The crash reportedly occurred at about 5.50 a.m. Eyewitness accounts said the crash involved an ash-colored Toyota Sienna bus marked LND 778YG and another ash color Hummer bus with registration number KTN 298YJ. The crash was said to have been as a result of wrongful overtaking and speeding. Ondo State Sector Commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Ezekiel Sonella, said three persons died in the crash while 12 were injured. One crash too many. Now, today we hear from the Federal Road Safety Corps what they are doing to mitigate accidents this period, and we're being joined in the studio by the FRSC FCT Sector Commander, Mr. Samuel Oga Ochi. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on Daybreak. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you, sir, and uh, we are glad to have you this morning. Um, this period, why this accident? Because look at from what she read. Uh, two accidents, uh, you know, major ones within a span of two days, you know, at the weekend. And uh, we've been having increasing reports of accidents, uh, you know, uh, in the past few days. What's really happening? Okay, thank you very much. Let me appreciate the level of consciousness that the media have been generating among the populace as far as uh, safety on a highway is concerned. Like I rightly pointed out, we have been recording series of crashes when it comes to what we generally refer to as ember months. And we are looking at uh, September, October, November to December. Uh, quite a number of uh, times, these crashes that happen on the highway are associated with the uh, attitude of Nigerians, attitude of drivers that are using the road, uh, our inability to appreciate the fact that, you know, cause uh, crashes don't just happen. I know somebody must be responsible. Uh, I think that has been the major problem that we have when we look at the, the number of crashes that happen during the Ember month. Now, you will take it from, uh, in the first place, vehicles that we're using on the road. What is the level of maintenance? We must look at that principally. And not only that, the, the drivers of this vehicle, what are their level of preparedness to use the road? You know, if the, the, the incidences that you have just recorded, the one that happened in Niger State, mm. and then the one that happened in Ondo State, all, all of them happened in the night. Uh, they happened at the time that, you know, level of enforcement has reduced. They happened at the time that people are expected to be resting, you know, and the people that are driving these vehicles never took enough rest the day before, and they are driving. And quite a number of times we have also realized that a number of them had some level of influence, you know, you know, trying to keep themselves up in the night while they're just driving. And like we have rightly pointed out, they were over speeding or they were speeding on the highway and wrongful overtaking. These are the things surrounding a number of the crashes that we record during the Ember Moon. Of course, we know that a number of people are moving from the north to the south, from the south to the north. Those of them that have not been able to get to their families for a long time. We want to celebrate the festive period in their homes. And because of that, you notice 
mass movement of people during this period. And unfortunately, the drivers take advantage of this, you know, to augment what they think they have not gotten you know, since the beginning of this year. And a number of them, without planning the journeys properly, want to do twice, thrice journeys on the highway. And these are the things that are responsible. Okay, now, aside, uh, you talked about overspeeding, you talked about wrongful overtaking and being under the influence. Now, what other factors uh, constitute uh, reckless driving or even some of these road accidents? If you are not conscious of the environment where you are, it's a major factor. Uh, for instance, in the FCT, which I preside, we had two ugly incidences, you know, in September and last month of a, a crash that claimed 19 lives uh, by uh, Yang Goji, and yeah. uh, that was September. And we had one in November that also claimed uh, 17 lives uh, just by the border of uh, Kwali and uh, Abaji. Now, if you look at the scenario, the two scenarios that were just uh, given, uh, you know, they, they, they happen because uh, the visibility at this time, of course, you must be conscious of your environment. You must be conscious of the time that you are driving. Now, if you are driving within this context, this period, you will know that uh, there will be some level of obscurity of visibility early hours of the morning and then late hours of the night. You are not likely going to see too far beyond your environment. Not only that, you must also be conscious of the fact that vehicles that are in your front may not be as perfect, probably, as yourself. So these are the things you must take cognizance of. So the problem of safety Consciousness of safety is a problem. Now, a number of them drove into the vehicles in their front. You know, the two cases I've just mentioned, they drove, you know, the two vehicles were on, on motion, going to the same direction, you know, and the, the, the buses ran into the truck in front of them, uh, okay. leading to uh, incidents of fire on the highway, and 17, 19 lives were lost. Now, what are we talking about? You know, if you are not conscious of your environment and allowing that to guide you as to what you're supposed to do on the highway, you're going to have problem. And it's one of the factors that's responsible for these mass cases of crashes involving a larger number of persons on the highway. Uh, Commander, first thing first, uh, in your opening uh, remarks, you mentioned the issue of uh, uh, the condition of the vehicles themselves. Mm. Uh, what are these issues? How does that you know uh, actually impact on driving and also subsequently maybe become a factor in accidents the health of uh, of vehicles okay like i also said you know uh, a mass number of people traveling during this period so a vehicle that has not traveled you know between january and probably august uh, because you just suddenly notice that people want to travel you put that same vehicle that have been you know, transiting within the city center the whole of the moons, and you now put that vehicle suddenly to travel from here to Lagos. Now, there's going to be a problem because the level of maintenance of that vehicle had not been adequate. We have not taken care of the nitty gritty, the, the details of what that vehicle requires to travel long distance. So there are quite a number of you know, such vehicles, particularly among the fleet operators, and they want to put the same vehicle that have not been properly serviced that a number of vehicles that, are, that do not have you know, tires that we can consider as good tires, because a number of them want to go and buy uh, Tokumbo tires and use those tires to travel long distance. And, and uh, quite a number of vehicles that do not even have you know, sufficient lightning system in their vehicles. These are the critical things that must be considered. You know, the tire condition of that vehicle must be considered. The engine component of that vehicle, the servicing of that vehicle, the lightning system and, and all that, the suspension and all that are required, you know, uh, uh, instruments that must be considered that that vehicle must have in perfect condition uh, for you to put it on a long distance in the first place. So these are the challenges that we have, that level of maintenance that is not done. And because you see the need to get profit and then you put that vehicle on the road suddenly, uh, you are likely going to have a problem while transiting on a long distance. Okay, now uh, most of these incidents that occurred, you know, happened at night and, you know, early hours of the morning. What about uh, dr driving at night makes it, you know, more dangerous than driving during the daytime? Okay, 
we, 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 we keep encouraging and uh, telling Nigerians that if it is possible for us to avoid driving in the night, that should be encouraged. Of course, we know that you know, uh, uh, the, we have the liberty to travel. Of course, a civilized uh, economy, you know, our, the economy runs 24 hours, and we're expecting that Nigerians should be able to get to that level where our system can run, including transportation, 24 hours. But at the moment, we still have the challenge. You know, if you look at the roads today, we have this major challenge of uh, security. You know, uh, that if you travel in the night, we are likely going to have uh, some level of uh, attacks, hoodlums, arm robbery, and all that. So it's a major factor when it comes to driving or traveling in the night. Then the aspect of safety that we are looking at, you know, we uh, road safety for uh, federal road safety call, for instance, uh, activities in terms of enforcement and ability to assess, you know, victims of crashes in the night is killed down because. Uh, we, 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 the Nigerians are aware of the fact that we are not armed. So our level of enforcement you know, is killed down in the night. Not only road safety, even other agencies of government, the Nigerian police, and every other person that participates to ensure safety on the highway. Of course, you don't expect that you know, they can be everywhere, you know, particularly in the night. So there's the possibility of you know, inability to you know, have immediate assistance when emergency occurs in the night. You know, if your vehicle runs into crash, you know, of course, we need to call our emergency lines and request to know where the location is in the night, and then we deploy that period of the night to that location. It takes a little time over and above what happens during the day. So these are the challenges that you have. If you are traveling in the night, you know, getting help, you know, where emergency occurs, where a crash occurs, may be a little bit difficult. And not only that, we are also exposed to a lot of security challenges that you know, may likely put that journey in jeopardy. So we encourage and we insist that if it is possible not to do that journey in the night, let's reduce night journeys. Okay, and uh, now what is the FIRC doing now to uh, you know, try and curtail this number of attacks, I mean, of uh, uh, incidents? and uh, perhaps change the situation for the better in general? Okay. We, le, le, let me say this for FCT in particular, uh, that uh, we started off quite well as far as 2022 is concerned. Uh, we looked at the activities of 2021 and the previous year, and then we came in with strategies that could help us uh, to reduce crashes in the FCT. Uh, what are the strategies that we put in place? Uh, number one, we, we, we started with a stakeholders engagement, where all stakeholders were looking at the transport union, the MRTW, the retain, the NATO, uh, the bracket uh, taxi family, the painted taxi, all of us, including the Kekinapev, the, uh, the motorcyclists, where they are allowed to operate and all that. We came together and we had some level of understanding. Now, we needed to carry everybody along because we know that all of us play very vital role in transportation in the FCT. And that level, we're able to agree on some things that you know, our members must abide with. I think that has helped us, that has paid off a lot. We had a very serious reduction in the number of crashes in the FCT. Not only that, we also noticed that uh, a number of fatalities that we record in the FCT, they happened mostly by weekends. And that is when people you know, go to relax in clubs and uh, they are coming back early hours of the morning of uh, Saturday, Sunday, you know, and they are still driving. Now we came up with a strategy to address that, where in the FCT, in all the 14 units of the FCT, uh, we uh, undertake what we call Operation Flush. You know, we, we, we do that to checkmate those that are driving under influence. So we do random checks by breathalyzer mm. on the people that are driving early hours of the morning on Friday, on Saturday, and on Sunday. And quite a number of persons have been, you know, detected. We have had that level of collaboration with other agencies of government, the NDLA. Sometimes we send them there to, you know, further test. Well, we notice that it has become a habit on the part of those users. But we've noticed that over time, you know, after the operation. Uh, was launched, you know, drastically we had a level of reduction of the number of crashes that are, were recorded by the weekend. 
Uh, then looking at what we're doing at the moment, you know, realizing that a number of people are going to travel between now and the end of the year and through to 2023, number one, we're doing mass deployment of personnel. You know, I have you know, in the FCT uh, 3,115 personnel that will be deployed, are being deployed fully at this time, you know, to all the nook and crannies of the FCT. I will continue to do that until the 15th of January when we expect everybody to have come back uh, to their locations in the FCT. Not only that, we have strategically located 16 uh, response ambulances in the FCT. Uh, we do that to respond to every emergency, whatever thing that will happen between now and the early days of uh, 2023. Uh, we have a lot of collaboration with all the medical facilities in the FCT. Uh, the problem we used to have in the past is the fact that when you know, a crash victim is you know, rushed to a medical facility, we, we always record the rejection. We don't have space uh, and we cannot do that because there's no payment. I think we have gotten over that you know, because of our level of relationship uh, with all the medical facilities in the FCT. So we have you know, quick response now to all cases of emergency in the FCT. Not only that, we are looking at uh, where we, we have blockages you know, as a result of breakdown of vehicles, we are strategically deploying our uh, tow trucks. We have uh, four of them in the FCT, heavy-duty tow trucks that will man, you know, Nyanya, uh, Kefi, uh, Airport Road, uh, Guagualada to Lokoja, and uh, Zuba, also to Kaduna. All those roads will be properly manned with heavy-duty tow trucks that will respond to removal of every obstruction during this period. We're looking at the possibility of, you know, achieving zero fatality. When I say zero fatality, even when a crash occurs, we're looking at the possibility of not having death incidences during the yield. Okay, but how valid, you know, uh, are the complaints by some uh, motorists that the cause of some of these accidents are bad road networks, even in the FCT? Okay. Uh, let me take FCT just like we have said, you know, as an example. Uh, for some time now, you know, a number of years now, FCT, you know, after Lagos probably has the highest number of crashes nationwide. But then, you know, to be fair to every one of us, FCT, of all the states of the Federation, has the best road network. I think I don't need to, you know, uh, uh, b bring any picture for us to have that because we are all aware that the government have done so well in the FCT, we have good roads all over the place. And of course, we still have challenges uh, when you are getting to the area council uh, and, and all that. But then, generally, we have better roads as compared. I've been to even Aquaibom, I was the commanding officer in Aquaibom before I came back to uh, FCT. Aquaibom had good network, but we cannot compare that to what uh, FCT has. But unfortunately, we're having higher number of crashes. So I don't think one can completely say that it's because of bad roads that we have crashes. I made a statement from the beginning and I said, it is our attitude. It is the problem of our inability to respond positively to obedience to road traffic regulation. That is the major factor. Now, I want to let you know that in the FCT, over 75 percent of the crashes that we record in the city center are as a result of overspeeding. And people take advantage of the fact that the roads are good. Looking at this period now, between 20th to early days of January, you are going to have scanty population in the FCC, that is the city center. You are going to have, because most of the people must have traveled, and you are going to have less number of movement, less number of vehicles in the city center. It has always been the experience over the years. And then during that period, you see a lot of accidents in the city center, and you begin to wonder, how did they happen? That is because people take advantage of the fact that the roads are free, and the ro roads are good, and then they overspeed in the city center. You see some of them doing staunch driving, you know, driving against traffic, even though there, there's no reason to do that. And they do all that, and at the end of the day, crashes, you know, the record of crashes you know, got increased you know, because of the attitude of Nigeria. And that is why we are addressing this problem of attitude by a lot of 
public enlightenment, public sensitization to the churches, to the mosques. We have been doing that since we entered August this year. We have been to churches, we have been to mosques to let the people know that, look, lives are perishable and we don't have any way of replacing them. Once it happens, that is the end of life. I think we need to do that to get that buy-in from those that are users of the road for us to have safety in their city. Talking about uh, overspeeding, let's have some education. What is the legal uh, uh, threshold or recommended speed limit for people driving in the city centre and also on the highways? Okay. Uh, when I say overspeeding, of course I'm using that term because that is what generally people get to appreciate. But of course, the right term is uh, speeding. Speed limit. Okay. No, speeding. Mm -hmm. you know, if you are speeding, you, know, uh, you should realize that there are laws guiding uh, what level or what, uh, what you are expected to do on a particular route and on a particular environment. By the standard of the United Nations, you know, uh, decade of action, uh, you are not supposed to drive beyond 30 kilometers per hour in a build-up area. And if you look at the whole of the FCT, for instance, if you are looking at Asokoro, if you are looking at uh, uh, Metama and all that, you know, these are highly build-up environments. In fact, the whole of the FCC can be considered as build-up area. So we are not expected to drive beyond 30 kilometers in the city center. And if you are looking at also environments outside the city center, you are transiting from Zuba to Wawalada, uh, you are transiting from Nyanya, of course, very densely populated. You are going through Abacha Barracks to uh, Kefi. These are, these are also environments that may be considered as densely populated and build up areas. So beyond 30 kilometers will not be allowed in this environment. Now, generally, uh, the law allows driving on the expressway 100 kilometers per hour for uh, cars, you know, and then you know, at whatever nature of vehicle that you are driving, it goes within that range. If you are driving a bus, you know, allowable this, uh, per, per kilometer uh, 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 coverage is about 60 kilometers per hour. And, uh, and if you are driving other trucks, of course, the provisions are there in the highway code as to which vehicle is allowed to drive you know, between particular kilometers per hour. All right. Now, just before uh, we wrap up, now reports have it that you know the highest fatalities, you know, is uh, recorded during the Yuletide season, and it's here again. Mm. So, what advice do you have for motorists out there? Okay. Again, for motorists in the FCT or we are transiting out of the FCT, let us reduce our speed. Let us drive to arrive at our locations safely. Not only that, you know, the, 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 this period we're in. Uh, also characterized with a lot of uh, uh, hammer time, haze. Mm. You know, if you're driving early hours of the morning, you should make sure that you have, your lighting systems are in good position. Watch out for the vehicle that is in your front. They may not likely be in the position uh, to them or to display enough caution. So you take a lot of caution to overtake so that we don't have you know, carnages continually on our highways. Okay, uh, maybe before we end, your men, let's flip the thing also. Uh, there are a lot of complaints uh, or experience by motorists in the FCT of, uh, especially lately, you know, uh, road safety officers are flagging down people even while they are moving, you know, moving vehicles. And uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, there are also allegations of uh, demands for, for bribes and all that. Um, you know, can you talk about some of these things? Okay. We, we cannot completely say that our men are free, you know, from what is happening in the society. Of course, uh, a number of uh, cases have been brought to my table and we have handled. And we have confirmed that, yes, you know, one or two elements among us uh, may be guilty of this. Of course, we have our internal mechanism to deal with cases like that. You know, if you are caught you know, collecting or extorting money from the general public, collecting bribe. Of course, the laws are there and will follow the laws appropriately. I've always told the media, each time I have the privilege of interacting in any of the media house, that my lines are in the public view. You know, please, if there are reasons why you must call me, not just the area of people asking of bribe, if you see any level of misbehavior of our men on the highway, please feel free to call my line or get to my office 
and that issue will be attended. And I think, you know, to, to be very fair uh, to me, if the Nigerian society, those that have had cause to interact with me, will do that, I think I've been handling every case that have been brought to my table. All right, thank you so much, uh, Commander, for taking time out to enlighten us on this issue. Thank, thank you. you very much.